My name is Benjamin B. Olshin. I'm a professor of philosophy and history of science, and I'm going to be participating in the Atlantic Conference uh, coming up in 2009. Uh, I'm going to address the issue of pre-Columbian voyages to the Americas, the dealing with evidence. What does evidence mean? How is it used? How do we collect it and organize it? Uh, I'm an academic, and I think academic criteria are important in dealing with issues such as pre-Columbian voyages to the Americas. I think peer review, which is related, uh, is also very important. But I'm also willing to look at the fact that there are subjects that fall outside the fixed fields of academia. Uh, some of that, for example, is history of cartography, which is my field. Uh, careful analysis of certain kinds of myths, such as the Atlantis myth, although some work has been done by classical scholars in this area. Um, and the fact that, for example, many texts in Arabic and Chinese have never been translated simply because they don't fall under any particular academic specialty. Also, it's not easy to get the kind of interdisciplinary effort that's required to examine some complex evidence. Uh, sometimes a historian of science, for example, will also be, let's say, a sinologist, a scholar of China, someone like Nathan Sivan, who can both examine a history of medicine issue and an ancient Chinese text. Uh, but that's unusual. Most projects uh, that have gone unexamined have gone unexamined because they require an interplay between archaeologists, classical scholars, linguists, etc. Also, academicians sometimes will have a tendency to ignore evidence that doesn't fit an existing paradigm, I will agree. Uh, for example, a Roman-style head was found in a Mexican dig. The exact uh, circumstances are not entirely clear, but it is a Roman-style head, and it was in an early Mexican or Mesoamerican tomb, I should say. Um, and that means it should be examined, and who will do the examining is the big question, because it kind of falls outside the purview of most academics' fields of interest. So, what's the role of the amateur, particularly since we are in a conference where many of the people interested in the subjects are amateurs? Uh, the word amateur has a very negative connotation, which is unfortunate because the original meaning in French, amateur, was simply someone who loves a particular subject or endeavor. So amateurs are fine. In fact, I think they're important. I enjoy uh, participating in a conference where there are amateurs. Uh, but there are issues that need to be addressed. Sometimes amateurs come to conclusions uh, without considering all the evidence. Sometimes very big conclusions, uh, such as the Chinese discovered America, are made on the basis of very little evidence. Uh, could have is sometimes made equivalent into did, categorically. Um, and sometimes primary sources are ignored in favor of secondary sources, such as the Hapgood book on the Antarctica speculation that he had. Many people cite Hapgood's book without actually looking at the Renaissance maps uh, that he himself looked at. And finally, uh, in the amateur world, people often work outside their area of expertise. Uh, this also happens in academia, unfortunately. And it's okay to work outside your area of expertise, but you need to kind of throw up your hands and say, I'm working outside my area of expertise, I'm just speculating. Um, and that can uh, be risky if one makes claims that are too big. But most importantly, what I'd like to address is the lack of a well-organized system of communication, review, critiques, databases, etc. Uh, academia has this. There are journals, there are books that are peer-reviewed. Uh, there's something called JSTOR, which gives one access to thousands and thousands of academic articles. There's a system of experts, etc. Uh, so what I'd like to address, particularly having attended the previous Atlantic Conference, uh, is the possibility maybe of a parallel system for amateurs, or a system that somehow connects with the existing academic system to allow people to explore systematically and intelligently uh, some very interesting questions such as pre-Columbian voyages to the Americas. And I hope uh, we're able to do that and perhaps start the foundation of a new uh, system of knowledge for amateurs.